So we have Dub Flow. Thanks for coming, man. I yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I know I've been trying to get out for a minute on here. But. Yeah, we've both had to cancel on each other a couple times, but I got canceled on a day by um, Mike Head, which I was all fucking... He's a touring comedian. He's at the uh, Helium tonight uh, headlining. So I was kind of stoked on that. And then, of course, being a comedian... He hit me up like he's like, oh, I didn't look the place up yet. <laughs> like, oh, that's like forty minutes away from me, man. Right. I was like, all right, just don't even worry about it. Hey, I mean, you forty minutes away from me too, but I was already kind of halfway up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I keep forgetting because I keep thinking about you living over there and. Um, yeah, yeah, right around the corner. Uh, yeah. Used to be, yeah. <laughs> so how is the whole new place? The new. Uh, it's good, man. It's good. Yeah. Treat me all right. It's nice being like right next to everything and shit. So. Yeah. Yeah, you've been so you're enjoying the city life, not having to have forty minute drive wherever yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, man. This is like I go to the grocery store and it's two minutes down the street, and yeah. there's everything I need. My favorite Chinese restaurants, three minutes down the street. You know, like nothing's not without a reach within five minutes. You know, <laughs> like everything's right where I need it, and it's nice. Yeah, that's. I'm, what... I'm pretty close to the highway too, so I can just get on there and jet it either either direction. Yeah, that's one thing I miss about the beach, like. It was a small little beach, so everything was right there. I would usually have my dog buddy pull me, really, on this on my little skateboard, my longboard that I had, and I just hook a leash up to him, and he grabs it with his mouth and pulls you to fucking wherever you want to go. Oh yeah, so it's a way to do it. Yeah, yeah, he misses it. I know I do, but it was like you didn't have to. You didn't have to drive at all. No one wanted to drive. Right. It was like a city person out there living. If you had to go to Walmart, that was like a planned trip, and it was only ten minutes away. But if it wasn't like biking distance, right. people the beach bums did not want to go. But I always kind of lived in the country areas on and off. Besides when I lived out here with my mom's, like, but that's still, you know, I guess not. Walmart's like five minutes away from her house, right. which is just horrible. Because Mitch loves Walmart. Uh, so, what do you got? What? what uh, yeah, yeah. I guess people when I know a lot of the comedians you're not uh they're around you uh you you're the lead uh you and Jeff Gorilla J are uh, Egan Rats right yeah 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 we do yeah. Egan's Rats me him and then we got a drummer Funko Creep and we we do the we do the the rap shit and whatnot with uh, them and that's, that's pretty much we do we dropped the album I think like last year in like May or something like that, and then we just been cranking out singles ever since. You know, just yeah. You did so you you've dropped your album, uh, and you're doing sing. Y'all working on another album right now? I'm guessing. Uh, not at the moment. We're just been working on singles, man. Just any any kind of little thing. We've been hopping on here and there, just throwing it out. We haven't really discussed doing another one yet. We just right. kind of been hitting the singles one after another, and kind of stretching out here and there with some boundaries. Like we just dropped a single. Man, I think like a month ago, if that was like a like a rock rap single, so yeah, yeah, that's what I what I, y'all's first shit y'all did. I remember it reminded me kind of of that Beastie Boys vibe in a way. Very, it was it's y'all are unique. I, I like all unique bands. I, you know, there's only a few that I can really pinpoint the sounds of. They're like right. I know Common Jones. Of course, I know uh, the discrepancies in ATG, and I know when it's you and Jeff on the fucking right. mic on, on Egan's Rats, because you all have your own sound. Uh, Larry, I can sometimes, sometimes I'll be like, is that Larry? And find out it's not Larry or something. Right. But, uh, yeah, I haven't made it out to many shows at all. Y'all haven't been really doing too many shows, have you? No, no, not really, man. Uh, we, we've been doing a lot of live streams from the rat hole, and that's been pretty much what we've been doing during, like, the pandemic time. And uh, we, me and uh, Gorilla J just went and hopped on a show at Pops, like, a little bit back, uh, like, uh, two or three weeks ago. But we weren't on the show. We just went and did a song with the homie with uh, Frost Money, so... So that, Pops that's, is back that's a, open? I didn't even know they were back Yeah, that open. was that was their first show, actually. But, nice. So, and it was a nice little turnout, man. It was a good time, and, you know, it was nice to be up on stage. Jeff's ass be itching to get on stage. I mean, I'm I'm not here or there, honestly. The pandemic hit, and people was like, oh, you, you itching to get back there and play a show? Yeah, I'm like, eh. yeah. You know, like, I find something to entertain myself anyway, as yeah, is, yeah. you know, like, fuck it. Yeah, I see you, you you're on Facebook and stuff, posting a lot of your art stuff. You've been really yeah. getting into, like, the sculpting and shit. Because you do that, that sculpt, fiber, uh, the styrofoam folds from Comic-Con shit. Yeah, yeah, it's like eating <laughs> foam. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, some of that shit, it blows my mind. I'm like, god damn. 
Like, yeah. you got skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually really easy, man. Like, it, it's once you got the tools to do it, like, which is not even a lot. Like, you just need, like, a utility knife and, like, a heat gun and some fucking yeah. uh, contact cement or hot glue. One of the two, you know. I like to use contact cement these days because uh, if I, like, glue something together wrong, I can just heat it up with the heat, heat gun and pull it apart uh, and yeah. glue it and stuff in the right way. But, yeah, man, it, it's, it's dope. It's fun. I, I really like to... Cut all the stuff out, man. Shape it, and then when you put it all together, it just comes to fruition in the three D. Yeah, on like the Halloween prop type stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You go to a Halloween store and would buy it. It's yeah, yeah, made yeah. Made out of foam and everything, so it's dope being able to make that. And be like, oh, that's really cool. I'm like, oh, I made that shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you made that? Like, yeah. Man. Bought the fucking visor off a of line. You know, cut it out. And... I don't know. Yeah, because you did the uh, you did a stormtrooper. Oh, uh, it's a uh, Mandalorian. Yeah, it's like yeah. a Boba Fett helmet. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I'm still in the in the process of working on it. Like yeah. I've been waiting for a nice day that hasn't been windy as shit or like overly hot or wet to get out there and hit it with some uh, plasti dip, and then I'm gonna start painting it, glue the visor into it. And oh shit! Once I get like the innards of that uh, done, you know, like some foam on the inside and make it form fit the head a bit, and it should be good to go. Are you selling this stuff? Or do you have people no, that want to buy it? I know you uh, got no, people that would want to buy it. Yeah, I got people who want some, but I'm, I'm not going to sell it. Like, where I get the blueprint for that helmet, like, the dude strictly says he doesn't want you to sell it, but... I could just like make them and gift them to people if they wanted them that bad. But oh, I was about to set you up an Etsy shop. Bro. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you that, can make some fucking. Yeah, a lot of people make stuff on Etsy for shit, sure, dude. Yeah, no. You know, like if I sketch my own blueprint up or something, I could, I could totally yeah. sell that. You know, but just like with that particular helmet, I use somebody else's blueprint, and so I'm sure there's some legalities there that. Yeah, yeah, they, it seems like they patent everything. I was reading, but so that. like the armor and stuff like that, though. Like I got different blueprints. For, blueprints for that and it'd be really easy for me to sketch up my own add a couple tweaks here and there for design just appeal and then i could turn oh, around yeah. and sell them for sure yeah do you I mean, have to have the work. blueprints to do it is that something that are you just following directions or are you just kind of not free necessarily handed? um like with the helmet i i followed a lot of directions in the blueprints just to, so it, it would all come together nicely but like with stuff like the armor and everything you can kind of free flow here and there like i'm gonna make some for some of my old lady too she's like five foot so I would have to scale things down and everything. So. Oh yeah, no, you should be you gotta make money, man. You're doing your uh, doing your thing with it. Like we uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I for right now it's just doing it for like me and her to have costumes and stuff and like bullshit because we we just like to go hard down uh, Halloween and everything, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the coolest shit. We usually do like a like a couple costumes, so we can. Yeah, I'm a horrible artist at, at anything when it comes to art. Like that was, I did that, and this took me like two days. <laughs> it was all on my phone, but it's dope, though. I mean, it's I fucks with it. To, yeah, I, just, I needed something to be able to have. I wanted to have something on there. Right. And I'm gonna eventually. I talked to my buddy Matt. He uh. He's one did my ta- a couple of my tattoos. Uh, he's gonna draw supposedly gonna draw something up, but I've got so many different ideas. I'm, one day I want something, and the next day I want something else. So once I figure something, I want to settle down on. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's always a trouble, man, with like trying to think of something. I have a hard time settling on a certain idea. I, I usually gotta like gung ho myself into the idea and start yeah. running with it. And to the point I'm too far back to turn back, you know, and then I then I'll be like, all right, well we gotta get this finished up and done. Yeah. Yeah, I am um I just once I fall once I find something I really want, I'm gonna get the like hats. Like one of those hats is um the Rock Paper Podcast hat. We we ordered one of them and it's a nice ass uh flat bill. So right. I wanna get some flat bills and stuff like that, but uh, I ain't even worried about merch so much. Uh, like I know a couple comedians that have merch, but I, not even close to that level. Like right. to where I'm, you know, once I can headline, then maybe. But until then, there's that, was no... a, that was another thing I had to do with Egan's Rats, man. It's like pump breaks a lot with uh, uh-huh. uh, uh, Jeff and uh, Tracy and Gorilla J and Funko Creep, man, because. They really wanted to dive into a lot of merch. And I mean, there still are a few Egan's Rat shirts out there and stuff like that. It's uh, quite a few stickers. Uh, and that was a lot of uh, the stickers, you know, that was a fan made, you know. Oh, yeah, I could do all that really easy. I could, yeah. they, I could do, like, if you sent me a picture of your logo, I can have it to where people can order your shirts online. 
Um, and then it's like you don't do nothing, you don't touch nothing. Right. The company in whatever Japan, with China, wherever in Asia, uh, has the shirt, and you send the thing. It's all on an app. It's uh, it's like Teespring. There's a couple different ones, but you okay. can design your own like sweatshirts, long t-shirts, uh, tank tops, hats. All different kinds of stuff, and you can put your logo oh, sure. right on it. Yeah, and then you don't have to touch it either because the uh, they they have they hold the shirt and everything, and then they print it up for you. Okay. You just are pretty much like a uh, you're kind of it's a it's a t-shirt company, and people make a lot of money off it. And you guys being a band, it would benefit you just to be because people would go there and, and yeah. buy one real quick. And then I think the shirts are only like twenty something bucks. Only thing is, is you're splitting the commission. Like, what would right. you, what you would pay to go buy the t-shirts bulk, and then print it all. You know, however, you get them printed up. Right. Um, you don't. That that process is just automatically taken out of sales. So they right. just sell t-shirts. That's smart though, man. Yeah. yeah so that. you ain't got to touch nothing. You, yeah. You're not worried about it. But and then you can order probably uh, a bunch for a show or have some made up. It'd probably be right. cheaper for you than ordering your own shit. Right. That would just be dumb. Yeah. yeah, and I, 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 we bought one of those cricket things or cr- whatever they are. The, the, it can do all kinds of shit, but she couldn't figure it out. And I'm horrible with computers. <laughs> like, right. I've been like two months waiting to get trying to figure out if I want to buy this new uh, iMac fucking Mac Mini. Have you seen these little mini Macs? Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah. they're like a little square box, and they can go to your TV and all different kinds of shit. Right. They got some new chip in them that's like badass. And I don't know if I, I gotta, I could, I got I could finance it all day if I wanted to. Right. <laughs> but I don't know if I want to go drop fucking twelve hundred bucks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's expensive, man. Yeah. Man, but there's so much stuff you could do with technology these days yeah. too, man. Just like in the prop making thing, man. Everybody's in three D printers now and shit. You know, dude. Yeah, yeah, but that's what my her, uh, my brother in law, my wife's brother, she Eric, he's built of the three D. He builds the three D printers and shit. He's wow. just like this computer whiz guy. Uh, always been into that kind of stuff. Like, dude, got arrested back in high school. He's real, like, not like nerdy. He's a cool guy, uh, but. He's into the computer thing, you know, right. and figured out or got like the machine that you're needed to make IDs or something like that. Figured out and was making fake IDs for all his oh, friends shit. in high school and got caught doing it. Damn. Or in college, maybe. Uh, right. So but he's always smart. Like, he, I don't even think he has a degree, but he's still like always working. He worked for, I have to believe, like MasterCard or some shit right. in their right. fucking computers department right. all kinds of shit so yeah i wish i would have learned the computers have been smarter on it that's I'm when hip. once my once we actually have a kid uh she that's one thing i'll be pushing hard like all the all ai robotics is what's coming like yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you want to know it yeah, because, i definitely wish i was a more tech savvy for sure yeah i mean i know i know things here and there like i could stick around with a couple programs and whatnot but uh yeah i've learned a shit ton i learned now how to like i've had to to be able to get everything like run smoothly and and just learn about formats and ratios on like platforms like youtube wants it at 16.9 unless it's a short video and it's got to be or like a, a tiktok that's all 916 i believe ratio and this website like it the the whole podcast platform shit is ridiculous because everybody likes their own little mp4a or mp4 mp3 and like god i gotta convert it 10 different times to upload it to all the platforms they just need to have a cool ass app out that like you can just i can shoot it and everything put it together (laughs) the first one yeah i wish i knew how to do that i believe me i think i have ideas all the time like man fuck i wish i knew how to do it it sounds like you need like a distro kid for your podcast (laughs) that's what we do we put our our singles on one thing and then it divvies it out so yeah itunes spotify youtube yeah i have uh i have it on anchor but i like i shoot it all with like the way i have the system set up with the audio and this and what's the cameras hooked up and and the audio is fed in and as the mics here so i have this uh, zoom h6 or whatever you know uh inter- audio interface with the mics and it runs all this stuff and it just basically so it's already synced up it's not like i have to do a bunch of post editing syncing all right. them you know all that up and then i'm getting the atem 
black magic uh, switcher board to where I can hook up multiple cameras and I'm uh, gonna get some of those new GoPros that they got out right. to where yeah, I can have three yeah. yeah to where like the three can be shooting us one of them's like right where that one's at and then one's pointing at you one's pointing at me and I can switch it during the whole thing and it's all all, right. uh, all loaded together yeah, and then yeah. I can just, just go in and, and, yeah. and edit out whatever I need to and not have to try to keep splicing up the right because I'm not good with that <laughs> so I'm trying to find the easiest way I'll spend a little extra money if it's Right. If I can save a bunch in that, all that fucking editing shit. Way to do it, man. <laughs> again, back to the foam stuff, dude. There's a couple tools, man. Like, if I had a bandsaw, bro, <laughs> fuck, I'd be cranking out stuff right now, man. Uh, so I cut everything by hand and shit, you know? Okay. It took a long time coming up. Like, when I started, I was using X-Acto knives, dude. Like, on a card, on a on a concrete floor, I didn't have, like, a cutting board or anything, <laughs> you know? So I'll be getting these jagged ass pieces, bro. Oh, yeah, just, I've got all the tools. Rough. Tools when it comes to the, that, you know, saws. I've got saw, saw, skill saw, fucking yeah, uh, worm drive, too, table, man. table I mean, saw. I okay. might have to come over here, bring some foam. Yeah, there, bro. I got I'll the just, table I'll saw. Just, I'll draw all my my prints out <laughs> on my uh, foam, and then I'll just come over here and cut them all out right quick. I'll be in and out in like half an hour. <laughs> You're always welcome. <laughs> I got fucking circular saws. I've got yeah, and then all the nail guns and, and everything else. I've got staple guns. Yeah, everything you need to build a house. I've got pretty oh, much. Yeah. And it's just, there's a bunch of the stuff going. I'm on. just trying to make Bubba Fett armor, so we should, <laughs> we should get this done in no time. <laughs> and I got some glue right. and some tape that a fucking that you build houses with. Right. Uh, but. So you you guys are just working on singles. You don't have nothing, no 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 plans on the book shit. Uh, no plans with Egan's Rats for uh, another album. I got some solo stuff I got in the works. I'm gonna be releasing here soon. Oh, uh, I'm gonna start with a couple singles and then I'll probably release the whole project out. I mean, it's just weird days that we live in these days, man. Dude, it's it like is. you 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 could release all of the album at once, or you could just release it single by single, is what everybody else is doing, just to you know stay relevant and popping instead of you know like I gotta drop. Yeah, an, an yeah. album a, a a a quarter. You know, now I could just drop. Yeah, no, that two or three singles a quarter, and yeah, and you because you, they only they only want one thing. They don't. Yeah, yeah, I get it because the same thing with like these. YouTube's always been a short video kind of platform. Joe Rogan and a couple other podcasts do the real long. Like I even like I said, I will let this bitch run all night. If I've, I've had I've had like ten hours worth of shit one right. night, and I brought it down to like three or four. But it, me and Mike Radcliffe sat here getting drunk as fuck working on sketches and shit. Right. Um, that he's hard to get a hold of to finish doing, actually shoot the goddamn things. But anyway, yeah, so I want to just fucking... I can see the short clips is what gets you the most views right now. The right. Look, like the, the TikTok platform and style that they're using. Yeah, like, yeah. And everything's like yeah. that, bro. It's like... Uh, Cause I can like splice this up into a million fucking short clips, right. and like like just segments, and every other one is about gets picked up at least for a couple thousand views. Right. right? Which I only like I said, it's how it is easy. Like back in the day, like I said, you'd have to release the album. Everybody wanted that. It was like buffet style yeah. listening, and now everybody wants you to just one. Feed it to him bite at a time. You know, yeah, <laughs> just spoon I, feed me. It's one hard thing for at a me. Time. I like to go and get the whole album and I go through each song. When I listen to an artist, I listen to like all of their shit. I'm in the mood to listen to that artist. Right. Like, for, and, and it's and like goes for like, thing, like I said, it's weird times we live in because you know, you got people like you who want the whole thing at once and you got people <laughs> who just want the singles every now and then. So, like, I'm thinking I'm probably just going to do a meet in the middle. I'm going to release half of it singles, the, yeah. you know. The half I really like the to a sweat suit kind of pig. Yeah. <laughs> like Nelly, yeah, and leave, yeah, leave, leave some good stuff on the rest of the album too, and then just release yeah. it all at once. The rest of it, so yeah. the people who wanted it at spoon fed get spoon fed. People who wanted a buffet get a little side buffet. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's happy. Everybody wins. I move on to the next project. <laughs> yeah. Do you push? Do you get on like? Do you do the YouTube shit real hard? Like, are you pushing your? music? No, nah, man. I, I I I'm trying to get rapper? my YouTube page up. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. Everybody says that. Like, yeah. why? Why? Why don't you do the YouTube? The, thing I'm watching. And, uh, I'm watching kids get fucking rich with like yeah. half the bars that you guys have, and I'm not seeing it. Like, they just sit there and stay in front of a mic and kill a beat, and it's like. Right. All right, and they're getting millions of views, and you right. can only record up to a minute. You got plenty of minute that 
minute verses to a beat. You Word, get. bro. And then it just that just drives traffic to your shit because you can put all your other websites in your bio yeah. link and everything. I'm trying to get my face or uh, YouTube up and running, bro. But hey, I'm getting there. That shit's easy, man. Yeah, <laughs> like I created you. Jules one in like two minutes. We'll get off the mics and we'll get use it to show me support. <laughs> The you want to stick with like short shorts is gonna get you yeah, like yeah. Cool, the quickest. That's all I'm on too, anyways. Like, I'm I, not trying to make some long ass YouTube video. No, nah, <laughs> no, nah, yeah, like the podcast. I like doing that. That's for one, it's great for speaking wise and like coming up with material as a comedian. But uh, I don't think that really works so well right. in the rap game. <laughs> well, I would like to do like topics on YouTube. I don't think anybody's doing topics. Like I'll hit like. My first couple to get the the attention going, then I'll start saying, "Hey, hit the comment section." Kind of uh, like a uh, uh, Antonio doing the comment challenges on Facebook. You yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Definitely. I'll, I'll That's do that on YouTube, idea. and mm -hmm. then every next video will be your mm -hmm. comments from last fucking week yeah. or whatever. That's that seems pretty dead. I, I'm pretty uh, procrastinative, so yeah. I would probably do like one a month. <laughs> oh no, that's that's where you gotta go and do. Uh... That's the only thing about YouTube. Just one stay every two in, weeks. I can't do one. You a gotta, week. you gotta stay consistent with your uploading on videos. That's like, wow, I'll take, I'll shoot this, and it's long form. So, like I said, I can split it up. I'll upload the whole thing, and then I'll pull a clip and, and edit out, cl edit clips and shit, right. and then throw up shorts and everything. So. Right. So. How long have you been doing it now? I remember you guys started back in high school, right? Yeah, like rapping. Yeah, yeah. We we've been at it quite some time. Um, I mean, I've I've been rapping since high school, but I didn't really get like uh Take, like anything it. recorded yeah. or doing shows until me and Antonio linked up. He was the first dude to be like, "Oh no, you know, everybody's got a little home studio at that time." <laughs> but everybody be like, "Yeah, come record, bro. come record." And we never do anything, and he was the first one to be like, "Nah, man, come come through." And I actually came through, and we recorded shit, and I guess you know been kicking ever since and i think that was yeah like i was pretty fresh out of high school so it was like oh wait yeah i remember antonio was doing this shit on I his think, computer i think the first show we did at pops was either in like 09 or uh, in 2010 something like that yeah i came you had back came up for town, yeah, yeah, yeah you were in uh mm -hmm. was it virginia or carolina yeah i was back in carolina and uh came down and stayed here for a while and got the job at the uh what should I call it? The uh, Bush Stadium I was bartending at. So, but yeah, no, that's a that's a long time. You guys been on it. Uh, you you didn't take a break at all, did you? It was a little bit. Uh, uh there, there was a little break there. Yeah, because yeah. we we started out. It was just me and Antonio doing stuff, and then yeah, we, we right started. Right. We picked up uh, Larry, and we started doing Cypher stuff, and we we hit that hard for quite some time. And that was a nice shit too. Yeah, that we were doing. and then uh, after that, you know, it started going going uh slowing down a bit. And then Larry went back to Carolina. And yeah, I remember. After that, yeah, we just we just kind of stopped doing stuff for a while. That's when Antonio started the linking, discrepancy. yeah, linking up with yeah. the discrepancies and everything. And, and look at where he's taking that and fucking what is it? Since '08, shit, that's over over 13 years now since you guys you you guys been in the doing it. Yeah. And you guys are killing it too. So you were, you were just doing tours before this whole COVID thing, weren't you? Fucking with yeah, like Warped yeah. Tour and all that. Yeah, yeah. So like, That's for, for like the past uh, four years, has been really hitting it hard. Was uh, 2017 wasn't a tour, but that was a uh, Point Fest. Yeah. And then that was uh, they did discrepancy did the battle for Point Fest and won that. And then that was the year Corn dropped out as well. So they got to play on the big. Big side stage, like yeah. Right before dude, and puppies. thank God it did because there was yeah. a lot of people that rushed. Yeah, it. that was crazy. And then, was... and I I had played quite a few shows with discrepancies at that point, but I had never played a show like that in my life. You know, because yeah. I was like a sea of people, and it's just like, damn, that's that's festival. And after yeah. you got that, after you got the taste for that, it's like I need more of that. You yeah. Know? Like, I'll keep doing these. Uh, a lot of people feel like after they do shit like that, they're above hole in the wall shows, you know, little small bars and everything. Like, I still do this shit. Like, I oh, I get it where I can get it, but don't get me wrong. It's it's a lot different than that feeling. Yeah, no, that's... That, yeah. Smaller bars are a lot intimate, too, man. You got less people to entertain, less energy to feed off of, so it's very... It's a more intimate show. It yeah. always is going to be like that. And you got more people and everything. You got more energy to feed off of and spread out you know it, it isn't as intimate of a show but it's 
there's definitely a rush. I'll tell you that. Oh yeah, no the the, the like I said, the performing. A lot of drug addicts, if they would, like want to quit doing drugs, get into performing right. after you quit because you right. get that it, that it fires up your goddamn. Especially if you're good, like and you got and you got a lot of good energy. Yeah. You can get some dopamine off it. And then yeah. in 2018, that's when we hit Warp Tour. I had Warp Tour with discrepancies, and we played Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, Denver, Colorado, Kansas City, and St. Louis. That was the four stops, and then then we played like a show in like Indiana or something after that. But it wasn't part of Warp Tour; it was just like a different show. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember you guys were gone there for a minute. I know Antonio was because he had started up that podcast with me and John, and then he was gone a lot, so it was a little hard to record anything. Yeah, yeah it was, they were fun. They were <laughs> we had a good yeah. time when we were yeah. recording. Yeah, now that that was my first tour experience, and don't get me wrong, like touring, especially like if you're you know a smaller band and in, in like a van, we're touring out of a van, you know. Oh yeah, so we got you, bunks in there. But, you rode with the discrepancies yeah, in the yeah, van. Yeah, Woo. I rode with the crew. Yeah, I didn't drive myself. <laughs> I, I was I was broke at the time. I mean, I'm still broke. I was more <laughs> broke at yeah. the time. I ain't have a vehicle to take it state lines like that and everything. So, but uh, yeah, well, I bunked up and it's rough, man. But it's fun as hell, man. Uh, I could only especially Denver, Denver, Colorado. There was like a little like because it's fast paced, man. Like after Salt Lake, like, as soon as we were done, like we were pretty much going setting our shit back up because we yeah. got to leave out that night to be in Colorado the next day at a certain time, you know and. Yeah, and they pretty much are setting everything. There's a A B A crew. I think I've always been told. I had a buddy that did uh, the setting up stages and shit. He had to quit doing it because uh, he had to do rehab because he became a drug addict <laughs> because of how much drugs the roadies are doing. Yeah. Because it's like A crew goes and sets up the stage, and then while B while A crew is doing that section, the next city, the next show. B crews at setting up another system, right. another stage, and it's like they just stay ahead of each other like yeah. that. So. And, yeah. and then the bands are just show, just driving right, <laughs> or yeah. flying it's if you got the money. It's for sure. But then, like I said, like in Denver, we didn't have to be somewhere the next day. So everybody that was on the tour just partied that night, like in this little area, man. And it was cool. You got to, like, rub elbows with big wigs. I don't know. I was sipping a lot. I was dancing. <laughs> yeah. We were in Denver, Colorado. I was partaking in other things, you know. And it, yeah. it was a great time, man. They had food and shit like that, you know. And it was just... Oh yeah, a blast! Man. Yeah, so you guys got to hang out with the actual bands that were. Who was it in there that year? Oh, a whole shit load of people. Whole oh, shit, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got I, too many. To yeah, it was, it was Warp Tour. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, dude, that's crazy too. Because I, that, was that the last one they were doing? Yeah, that was the yeah, last see, tour. I mean, I, they did the show, a few shows after that, but they weren't tours, you know. Yeah, back in the day, that was uh, Warp Tour was the one we went to regularly, and then we had the Lunatic Luau. That was like on the beach thing, uh, but the. Uh, yeah, the Warp Tour. We'd always go to the big pavilion. There'd be chicks everywhere, <laughs> mosh pits right. and shit going on. Yeah, yeah. Like the one cool thing about tour is like camaraderie, man. So like we were we were like you know bunking up with like other bands that were like on our level. You know, you know, yeah. you're just local trying to do something, but they're like from LA and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like one of the bands we were like bunked up with was like a they were called the World Over. And we just, like, kicked it with these people. These are, like, our people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we watch their tent and shit. Well, people are got merch and everything. They watch ours. And there's great people that you meet out on the on tour and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I like, and a lot of you meet, get, meet a lot of fans. I know Jules and I uh, met. Uh, she got she met them a few times because she's seen them so many times. My sister and her went and seen them, like, three times down on the beach. It's called Red Gold Green uh, is their name. They're, like kind of kind of like what Antonio's doing but with a reggae vibe to it much more of a reggae vibe right and uh they were gonna be before pandemic they were planning on coming and crashing here while they were performing down here next and everything right. and I was like that's perfect I mean, we were gonna get them on Antonio's podcast but pandemic ruined it yeah man it's, it's, it's crazy so people went nuts over this shit too they're still going nuts right like, so, definitely yeah. seen some mental cracks <laughs> In society. So so after 2018, 2019, I did Grow Fest with J.E. That's uh, Nelly's producer and everything. He oh, did shit. high scores. So, yeah, he had, like, uh, this other rapper, Scrub, kind of gatekeeped and just cherry-picked a whole bunch of dope St. Louis artists. And then we had, like, a stacked lineup. He, like, pretty much put together this whole... Uh, little tape album thing, and it, it had, none of it's really been released yet, other than like one single. But 
they did like all the beats from like old school like game beats and stuff like that. Right, like, it was right. really dead, and that's why it was called High Score. You know, me and Antonio had a song that was a uh, the Guile theme from Street Fighter. You know? oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And they have been released. How long they've had that? 2018. That that was 2019. 19. Two years going yeah. on. So the only time you got to catch that was if you came to Grow Fest. <laughs> 2019, and there's still some clips floating around online. You know. Oh, you didn't get a copy of it. Look at it. Nah, I ain't get a copy. Oh, that's that's fucking. I got to be I got to be on uh, the local show on the point for it and kick, yeah, it with, yeah. kick it up chop it up with cornbread and stuff like that so I made moves like that and then when the pandemic hit you know obviously people weren't touring everything you know had to try to find out different ways to make moves and I was just twiddling my thumbs bro I was like you know forget everybody's not doing anything during the pandemic yeah. Well, then the homie Tony Patrico was seeing some of them, them con- uh, tournament 16 bars I was putting out, you know, because I just be shit talking to my 16 bars, you know. Yeah, people yeah, people yeah. love that shit. It's like we were talking earlier, that short, sweet. Yeah, hey, yeah. I got yeah. a little minute clip here, some bars, like 16 yeah. bars. Like, that's what they want. You know, they were eating that shit up. I was getting like. 200 something likes and shares and you know this which is good for me you know other oh, it's a dopamine do. rush on that too but yeah, yeah know, I, they I, studied it <laughs> well, shit bro i had that uh viral post uh what was it fucking okay, just a few months back man when that whole twisted t and uh shit popped off you know and i, I posted that uh uh what, what was it hold on it was a. Uh, Ocean spray for the things I can't change, twisted tea for the things I can. <laughs> and dude, like that shit went viral. Like I was started like looking at it hours later, it was like eight hundred likes and shares, and then like the next day it was like thousands. <laughs> yeah, my, my pops is husband. My real Got up dad. to like three point six thousand like shares nice. and likes. Yeah. My uh, pops' husband did a released a video or or shared posted a video and it was like when COVID first happened spraying this chick down or something she's right. like i'm fine i'm not sick she's uh, <laughs> or something like that and it was like it jules seen it and then she seen who orig- who originated from like right. seeing the, the she's like that's your dad's husband <laughs> and it was already up to a couple hundred right. thousand i was like jesus christ yeah viral man it just yeah. happens just psh, psh, psh. i didn't i've never had anything viral in my life you know even being a musician and shit like that like i i had a that one, I, I did like one of those 16 bars that hit like, it was like 4,000 views, like in a, in a certain time frame, so it like classifies as, but it's like baby viral. You yeah, know? you only got I never had do... like a post that went like viral, viral and stuff. Oh yeah, I remember one night when I, my first video, like when, I, when they first started off these shorts on uh, YouTube, like I had done, I tried it out because I got, I, for some reason, video pops up on my video feed from like, the YouTube creators and it's just autoplay on there sometimes while I'm doing shit in the background and it's talking about these shorts how it's going to be beta tested in them and everything and if you record a video and you put hashtag shorts in the <laughs> clip and it's under a minute you can um, it, it'll be put on this thing like the short shelf or they call it right. and, and it'll play if you're on YouTube there'll be these videos that are short and they just you they'll just play and play right, you can right. just like tiktok yeah i was about to say like tiktok uh-huh yeah, so. and uh my first one that got picked up i did a couple of these clips called comedy tips by comedians and it's just little short clips of what what whatever comedian would help them and i was talking about it i looked at my phone to to do look at a um uh, the, the something and I seen the numbers and it was at like twelve hundred. I was like, oh right. shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm used to maybe a hundred. <laughs> right. It is a nice feeling, man, when you know that it's just popping like that. But you know, it's just how it goes. It's, you know, it a, when I made that dumbass post about ocean spray and twisted tea, I just thought it was funny as fuck. So we had the ocean spray dude and then we had the twisted tea dude. <laughs> yeah. He got paid, didn't he? That ocean spray? No, he got a car. Yeah, he got a truck. He got like a whole truck load of ocean spray and shit. And, yeah, he uh, got acid free flux like a motherfucker drink on yeah, this shit. Yeah, right, right. Dude, dude's kidneys clean as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, that dude was everybody's spirit animal, though, man, for real. And then uh, also, too, uh, Fleetwood Mac, man, they got oh, popping yeah, yeah. from that song. Like, that song was in that. And everybody was like, oh, fuck yeah, Fleetwood Mac, man. I That's forgot how good this song was. <laughs> You know what? Let me go dust off the vinyls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, man, like I was saying, uh, Tony Patrico hollered at me, was like, yo, I got this music project, Futon Wolfs, and I'm working on, like, I want you to hop on this. 
and he sent me something, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to get started on this. And I told him I got something started, but I really did, because I told you I procrastinated, <laughs> which was good, because then he was like, no, actually, I want you on this whole different song. And I'm like, all right, man, I guess I'll just scrap this nothing that I was working on, you know. And, and uh, we ended up doing that, and he played it on the radio in the morning show on uh, uh, the Woody and Riz, or, uh, yeah, Riz, Riz, Riz show. I thought I heard of him talking about that. Yeah, he'd been making his own beats and stuff. And, yeah, yeah. yeah Tony has said he would listen into some from him, I think, which yeah. is cool. That's fucking, yeah, because he's got a big name, big name. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, dude, like, I my phone blew up that day. I woke up at, like, 9 o'clock. Like, they had already done playing. Right? <laughs> you know, I went back and listened to the podcast later just to hear them mention my name and shit. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. didn't even play, like, the song on the podcast and everything, but. So they just convert their whole show into the podcast. Don't I they? believe so. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, they, I think they got like the number one podcast in St. Louis. Yes, my shit was just blowing up. Everybody like, hey man, you on the radio right yeah. now? <laughs> oh shit, I heard you on the radio. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh fuck, they talking about Duff Flow on the radio, man. You on the Riz show right now? And I'm Am just I like, famous? Did I make it? News <laughs> to me. So that was my power move in the pandemic. You know, in 2020, yeah. like I still was able to stay relevant without doing a, a tour or a show yeah. or. So I got like 2021, 20, I gotta try to pull something else out of my ass. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Like, we're gonna start is, releasing these singles and hope that they pop off as, hope, as much as I hope that they do. Because I got a couple gems that I'm sitting on, man, and it's man. a different flavor from me that people are accustomed to. Have you had any labels or, or pretty, uh, step, you know, uh, approach you yet? I, I had one yeah. saying that they was they were really interested in signing me, right? And then uh, whenever I started talking to them about it, you know. I started uh, pushing the Megan's rat shit, and, and uh, <laughs> th- I don't think they were vibing to it, because they never hit me back <laughs> after that. I don't think they wanted well, me. okay, got the answer. Yeah, I think they wanted me personally, and at the time, like, I had I had been working on my solo stuff for a, a bit, but as far as, like, something hard copy recorded, like, I could have maybe sent them a song, you know, yeah. maybe two, which they probably would have might still been interested in. Yeah. But I had that whole album we had just dropped with Egan, so I, like, I sent them that whole album, was like, hey, this is what... I'm working with it right now, and I just don't think it was the flavor they were looking for. Or you know? I like Fuck it. Em. I like our first album because it, it was different. It was a, it was a different sound, especially mm-hmm. from people around here, mm-hmm. you know. And it's hard to pinpoint what it reminds you of if it does at all. You yeah. Know, so yeah, no, it's very unique, and that's that's what they they're looking for. And most of the really unique people struggle in the beginning to be get heard and get found because they do want this stereotypical sound it right. seems like that they can really market a brand around right. which that just needs means that you guys got to market your own brand do your own marketing do your own branding and then it'd all be yours and there's been a few rappers out there that were smart and did it all like on right. their own label on their own shit and I can see how it's tough as a younger artist like when you first started trying to do all that with uh, no money but right. as an adult now i feel i, I feel <clears throat> like this whole podcast thing i spend i've slowly saved up money and to put into it like equipment and getting better and better right. equipment and because i'm an adult with a job and i can support it right. I, I, a lot of comedians don't have uh you, you see them they don't have right. jobs or or just have a job just enough to get them by right. and they're like kind of broke and it's like, dude, you can have a job. Like, you can still do comedy. Because comedy's at right. night. There's not no time. That, until you're really hitting, traveling. And then, then you pretty much made it. To Shit, me. man. I, I've always worked again. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? While I've done music and stuff. And I know a lot of musicians who don't, you know, yeah. work jobs and shit. I don't know how some of them do it. Because you do got to invest in yourself. For yeah. sure. All day. And I got, there's a lot more I could have invested in myself, I'm sure. You know, like, I could have me a little home studio where if I get the inspiration at night, I could just go hop in that bitch, drop it. Right, you know? right. But I don't, you know. I, <laughs> I've, I, said, I've always I had, like, two or three friends with home studios, so yeah. I was like, I need one. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've, dude, I've really, I don't know why I've wanted to build a studio studio, like, and have all the equipment and the instruments, but I don't know how to play shit. Like, I just right. wanted there to look at it. It looks cool. Like, it's yeah. nice. Like, yeah. I don't know yeah, what I the fuck this shit does do. I got fingers, man. I can't play instruments yeah. like People like to think that I'm good at a lot of different things, and they're just like, "What? What can't you do?" One of those things is playing instruments, bro. Yeah, I, can't <laughs> like, play shit. I get a little bit on the keyboard, and that's it, man. That's about that's where that stops. I play that right harmonica there. a little bit here and there, but other that's than funky that, though. Yeah, that, I'm not nothing great, I've, but it, yeah. Anyway, I've never been great at music, right. rapping, singing, none of it. I know how to. I know what's good. I, I'm really good at like hearing a band. And being able to be like, oh, they've got something that's going to go somewhere. Like, And I'm usually, 
Like, especially with that Cali reggae funk band shit. I can always call the ones that are going to get big right. real quick. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they're going to, everyone's going to love that sound because right. it's kind of generic. It's, it's, it sucks, but I mean, because there's such better artists. Out there. Like, I'm, I'm always on the YouTube for my, a lot of music. Like, uh, who is it? I've, I've listened to a dude named Cal Scrubby a little bit. He's fucking hilarious, some of his shit. He does little. Sh- Little get uh, mini videos of like like sketch art, like sketches and shit, comedy. Right. But he's a rapper too, and he's got a couple good songs that are fucking hilarious. And then he's got some that are really actually good. And uh, he was just a dude from Ohio or some shit, and now he's in L.A. He dude, made it. people make moves in like the yeah. oddest ways. That's that's what I was getting at. Was uh, earlier was like. I've invested really minimally a lot in myself in a lot of different ways to points where people are like, oh, why you got a buzz like this, man? How are people like popping? Like a lot of people know who you are in this kind of scene. And that's just weird moves that I made really cheap. Some, most of them free moves. I do like discrepancies just being nice to take me everywhere, you know? Yeah, like that's yeah. a big thing, man, getting like to tour out and get play different areas. But me not personally having to put enough money into pumping my shit oh, yeah. in that areas, you know? Yeah. Or like uh, Rock Paper Podcast, doing the theme for that, man. A lot of people are like, oh, man, I really like that theme song. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And that was just like Shane approaching, being like, hey, man, I like your bars, you know? And <laughs> I got this and Shane's that. Shane's cool as fuck. He had a fucking... Uh, what's it's just name? the moves that you make, though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like you gotta you gotta invest in yourself, but work harder, not smart, or smarter, not harder. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, shit. That's like a big. That's one of the main sayings over there in uh, in construction. <laughs> yeah. You know, if there's an easier, smarter way to do it, do it that way. Save your back. But yeah, no, definitely. That's the discrepancies could taken off and really, you know. But you guys all put in, and and you're key piece to a lot of their most of their albums like some of their best songs i've been told i'm the unofficial fifth member (laughs) yeah like no for real like i don't i would they couldn't release an album without you on one song at least it's like where is it where there's gotta be one (laughs) there's gotta be one even even that there was like another good flip push for my buzz as rapper you know it's just my name dub flow is that I, you know, went doing years hip hop in St. Louis, so people just like, yeah, whatever, you know, like look over you because it's a very clicky uh, scene and everything. But you, you start doing something with rock rap people who are pushing to a different scene like rock, and their motherfuckers love you. They're like, hey, don't yeah, flow, man. Yeah. Like, hey, then they show their friends and shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that just that's a different buzz was like pushing into a different genre that other rappers weren't hidden in that area. Oh you know yeah, no, like, that's it's gotten popular too. I've been yeah. seeing it more and more, and it's like. Man, right. <laughs> you know the one I miss the most is uh, Danny. He, I, man, I really enjoyed. Danny was such a good yeah. guy. <laughs> I had him. He worked with me for a little. Worked, yeah, yeah I got him. Guy. He was the hilarious one on the. Like I thought he was hilarious Super and really talented. talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude could play. Um, yeah, the first time I met him, he showed me like the song. He was like, "Yeah, here, check this out. This is something I'm on," and it was just like this. Whole rock song, you know, drums, mm-hmm. bass, <laughs> guitar, yeah. yeah. And I was just like, "Oh, that's dope, man! What do you play?" He was like, "All of it." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, "Yeah, it was all of it. I did all that." And I'm just like, "Oh shit, man! Yeah. This is super impressive." Fucking the prodigy, like yeah, Prince. Yeah. yeah, he could play a lot of them. And then you got John. I don't know if he can play instruments, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's funny. John, man, he the funny guy, dude. What he's done in the seven years of comedy or eight years he's been in it now. Right. Fucking amazing. Yeah, I, I love seeing uh, the come up, man, because... Like, he can make... Like, what is making it to you when you in this scene? Because there's a lot of rappers that, like, are underground that, you know, are making money. They're not making the right. millions and millions, but they're making fucking, you know, six figures, a couple, you know, a right. few hundred thousand. If I, if I could make more money, if I could make enough money to pay my bills... And, and, and not man. work, <laughs> yeah. that would be making it to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I already get people that recognize me. Each other. When I, had, I worked at a gas station, you know this. Yeah. I would have people come in that gas station all the time being like, hey, man, you know who you sound like? Or you know who you look like? And if they didn't say Post Malone, then it was always Dub Flow. <laughs> 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 I'd be like, dude, that's me. And they're yeah. like, 
I had a couple people being like, give me that look like they're in their head saying, get the fuck out of here. And then just walk out. There's a couple people being like, oh, man, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, I was yeah. just bumping your shit. Right, right, right. I seen you at Point Fest. And yeah, I'm just like, you want a lighter with that? Like, <laughs> here's your receipt. It's in the back. Want me to sign That it? goes back yeah. to the I've always had a gig, man, no matter what. Like, even, yeah. when, and even when I'm buzzing and people are like, oh, man, you're like famous. And now it's like, I'm... Oh, dude, Still I've had working, people, bro. like, I've went to, uh, I've been in Still Walmart pay bills, and man. shit, and had people come up and be like, yo, you know Antonio and dubbing them? Like, you know those guys? It's like, yeah, yeah, why, why? Oh, I just, I went to one of their shows and you were hanging out with right. them, and I didn't know if, uh, I thought it was you. I was like, that's a weird as fuck. Arnold, I was wearing, uh, my mom was wearing one of their shirts once, right. and like, Someone getting called out and shit talking yeah, about. Yeah. I, I liked it. it was like, yeah, I've oh, seen shit. it in weird places, and I've and I've been at shows like at, at Point Fest was one of them. Like I got stopped like two or three times by people who were just like saying they were from some state because that was before I was touring too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I didn't tour before that, and they were like, "Oh, I'm from so and so state. We came here just to see y'all and you. You know, like saying my name personally. Yeah. Like we came to see discrepancies and Dub Flow. You know, hoping you'd be here because they, yeah. they didn't put me on the flyer or anything. You know, what I'm saying people were just over there crossing their fingers because I'm I'm an unknown. You know, those are those true un uh, those true like underground fans. Yeah, you yeah, know, like that. Those follow the, it very yeah. closely. Yeah, those <laughs> are the unsung heroes. Yeah. yeah, or I mean, dude, discrepancies had that dude from Dublin, Ireland, fly out one time when uh, I think that was Warp Tour. He could have flew out from Dublin, Dublin, Ireland to come watch them play. It's like, dude, that's hardcore. You get some fans out there that, like, they're hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Shit, the money it costs to do that. Right, right. Like, that's more money than I probably made I'll off send of music. You a, I'll send you a DVD <laughs> of all the shows, man. Like, the, buy me some equipment. <laughs> the, the most m- money I've made off of music in one sitting was $100 for oh, a shit. rap battle. And uh, my first opponent didn't show. So I was only supposed to rap battle two people, but I only ended up had to rap battling one person, and I won. So I won a hundred dollars to show up and like pretty much spent sixteen dollar or sixteen bars. So I that was like the most money I'd made off of music in one sitting, probably still to this day, man, for real. Like, cause it's hard to scrape by off of other shit. Like you're, you're literally scraping by off of like merch and yeah, merch. If you're doing the ticket going. sales thing, man, which we we avoided that as Egan's Rats a lot. Like we had a lot of show offers where people were like, oh, you know, just like ticket amounts and all that and that and I was just like dude we're unknown like as fuck like I'm not doing the ticket sales thing like I work a job like yeah. I'll end up buying these tickets and giving them out and I ain't trying to pay to play so yeah no. nowadays we probably could but we just still I do the, not uh, to most of the time yeah no that's it's comedy's a big one in that like a lot of I've, I've heard a lot of comedy being me newer to the game only like into the second year it's I perform. I have a lot of the people that put the shows on. Like if it's a if it's not like one of the comedy clubs, and they even the comedy clubs back door. I've uh, uh, performed a few times, hosted and and a few different featured there. And I've any time he's ever tried to pay me, it's like just keep that shit, man. Just right. thanks for the stage time. That it's more important to have right. the stage time than than the money because I got a job. I don't you know. Right. I don't That's how it. we push it, man. We just wanted her to play shows. And there was a couple people who threw us some money. Like, we got 60 bucks a couple times. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's three of us in Egan's Rest. That's 20 bucks a piece. And don't get us wrong. We were stoked about it, you know. But we turned around and spent it at the bar, you know. <laughs> like, or put yeah. it in our gas tank because we had to drive to St. Charles to play that show, you know. But yeah, I we were it. just stoked to be there, you know. Yeah, I think it was Tim Loss or someone else's other show. And they paid... He and he, I didn't feel bad because he had a stacked house. Like, a shit ton of people showed up. It was a Valentine's show. And he threw me like eighty bucks or something like that. I did kill it though. That night, that was a good crowd. It was a lot packed in, and they haven't been. You know, they were. I think they were Trumpers because they didn't, none of them had a mask on. <laughs> I didn't give a shit. Uh, how do you feel about the whole vaccine shit? I'm not really here nor there on it, man. Like, I'm not going to go get it until they're like, hey, you got to go get it. Yeah. If it and doesn't I mean, affect me about my, like, right. work life, like, if my work don't say nothing about it, I mean, yeah. fuck it. <laughs> Same here. I mean, but I do work for some, you know, people that would pr- probably want me to do it at some point. And if they mm. do, then I'll do it. You know, I'll do what I got to to keep my yeah. gig, but. Yeah, it's a big hot topic in the passport shit, <clears throat> you know, like can't give a felon a passport <laughs> no i'm not a felon but still i'd be, I'd be like i'm a felon man i'm gonna go commit a felon <laughs> right <laughs> no that's not the same thing but still i uh i don't know uh, 
the whole uh yeah i know there's definitely a uh, very broad spectrums on both sides of it you know and i think you know for the people who need it that's cool and shit but i'm not gonna be hopping in oh yeah there, there's definitely the 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 anti anti-vaxxers that like that's all they live and breathe is, is talking shit on the vaccines and then you got the, the other side that's like battling them and the, the majority of the people are in the middle and everyone i've talked to about it they're like no i don't know i'm gonna wait just a few See how the first round yeah. goes. Let's... Yeah, I'm definitely not like I said, hopping in line or anything. Like, yeah, no. if it came to a point where they was like, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta cop this," then no, I'll get it. But yeah, no. if it don't come to that point, I probably still wouldn't do it. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm a very anti-medicine guy for real. I rarely get sick, and I probably cuss. I chalk that up to a lot of like, yeah. I don't even like half the time. I won't even take shit if I get a headache, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Well, I just no. be like, I go nap this shit off right quick or something. Like, yeah. drink some fucking water, or maybe eat. I don't know. It's got to be something. Yeah, but I'm I'm just very anti medicine, man. So pressure in the head uh, for headaches is. Uh, I was watching something. I was watching all this shit about frequencies and shit. Like they're supposedly like one guy made a machine or something like that. Like that really helped like resonate frequencies or some shit where it can like unclog your nose, your ears, help you though. Like your, all kinds of shit. You make your nose drain if wow. there's pressure and like sinus pressure or something back there and like just do all different kinds of shit and like they're doing big studies on like pressure point acupuncture kind of in a right. way like harvard made these shoes that supposedly the soles these insoles for your shoes that like hit certain pressure points in your feet that alleviate and like help like all kinds of things like change the game as far as like health wise for back and and uh just uh like neck and, and headaches I mean, they sound they sound dope as shit just yeah. you describe them, just... <laughs> yeah they just it looks like they just got spots where they they they, they hit on certain pressure points and, and massage those points i don't know there's all kinds of these they need those studies. for your hands i'll start walking on my hands everywhere <laughs> <laughs> shit that this is just shit that they're coming out with today it's just mind-blowing yeah like, I mean, technology dude it's always something new every day it's crazy yeah. shit shit the, the the department of defense or whatever it is not the the, the darpa the the def- defense whatever they they build all the science all the inventive shit they put a patent out for like a machine that can control create and control the fabric of of reality or some shit like this is in the news i was like what i'm like all high and i'm like maybe i'm a little too stoned yeah it's right in there with all these other things that they labeled the patent office labeled the ufo files and i was like oh shit they're talking about all kinds of crazy shit, and the patent office was like laughing at them, I guess. So they had to build a machine to prove, like a, a prototype, or, or build it out and show them, like it, make it legit. And they could just be doing that to kind of freak out the other countries, because I can, you know, they do that shit all the time, make fake patents just to like all propaganda. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. the Russians to be like, hey, they got this. But I mean, we still really are just working off of. Uh, Hitler's shit right now the the rocket the missiles from what we know like isn't that how everything's launched missile rockets and shit that was Hitler's technology that shit's crazy I don't know man yeah I know the Nazis <laughs> put a lot of weird shit in there which I mean to every every fucking government does dude you can't, you can't yeah, yeah. Every, every government does some sketchy ass experimental Try oh, yeah. to try to advance this. This I, we, I always wonder Especially about North when, Korea. Uh, like radioactivity shit came upon man. Like a lot of people started experimenting with like nuclear radioactivity and oh, they did the uh, genetic the, the, mutation the, type shit. Yeah, you know? that the ambassadors of America. There was like six of them. They got like a uh, microwave radio wave attacked. Basically, like this is an old Russian weapon that they they think that they used oh yeah 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 they, they like sealed their, yeah, yeah like it was like a, a pimp i don't know but yeah they, they, they uh the big deal was the doctors wanted their files for like how long what's going on with them and the cia won't release the files they labeled them uh the national security threat and it's like what the fuck <laughs> like That's why did you yeah no sometimes you go down those rabbit holes i really like those videos of those people that are like going through and they, they go they just sit on the internet at the cia all day long and go through like all their because they'll dump millions of files right. at once that a lot of them have bullshit in them but they'll find some gems sometimes and they'll make one right. of these amazing production videos and right. shit. So you're just sitting there all stoned like fuck 
That's why conspiracies are too good. Because the quality these fucking guys are, are, are able to make these videos is amazing. And the weed's too fucking strong. Yeah, I've been down, but not a couple of rabbit holes myself. <laughs> I get on a lot of that. Like, uh, you know, 10 archaeological artifacts found, you know, that... that oh, the out-of-place dispro- artifacts. Yeah, yeah, like, that disprove history and sitting there. It's like, oh, this shit was supposed to win five hours ago? Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm about it. Next day, fucking 10 artifacts that... Popped up where they shouldn't be like, ten hours ago. Hey, fuck it, I'm in. You know, it's like, yeah. but YouTube's about that shit though. You know, you watch one and it's like, oh, you fuck with you that. like that. Yeah. <laughs> you like going down rabbit holes, little motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. well, hold on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hold right. on to your fucking it aluminum foil be, hat, bro, because we're about to go. <laughs> it used to be really good. Now that they fucking are doing all their censoring shit. Back in the day, there was no MSNBC or Fox or CNN on it. It was just YouTube creators that right. was. You could get down some crazy ones, uh, but no, I, I really just like the uh, the unclassified documents, kind of the ones that are all about that shit. It really fucking cracks, like some of them really blow my mind. Like the experiments that we've done on ourselves, the the, the government has done by on us, like just not not just like MK Ultra and shit. Like they did the Tuskegee shit. They were shooting up. <laughs> Uh, a yeah. bunch of black dudes with uh, syphilis, syphilis yeah. and then would refuse to give them the cure after they were found <laughs> right, it. You know, right it was like yeah. and and like for years later too because mm-hmm. there was that one dude that was that was recent that it, dude was like 60 or 70 or something like that yeah. and ended up finding it out and they was like no no you can't cure them and they were like what and they were like yeah it was a fucking art experiment like, yeah. <laughs> they were doing it to all these people down here in downtown st louis yeah. they were fucking had these machines spraying these testing <laughs> chemical <laughs> right. bio it's like holy shit! They had this whole uh, what was that town that was out there? Um, the uh, pro- man, not project. Fuck what was it? Where they made the uh, the nuclear bomb and they didn't know because they were sworn to like secrecy, not to tell no one. It was classified, so no one knew what each other were working on and didn't realize they were making the atomic bomb. And they used a whole city. Right. Of, it, of like people pretty much to build the atomic bomb and, and put it together and everything and they didn't really know what they were doing until it was done right. and they were dropping them motherfuckers right. and just melting people's shadows into the concrete yeah yeah that's crazy shit ain't it man fucking nuclear shit dude it's, it's nuts we be getting on that topic sometimes too, man. Of like, a, you know, people wipe themselves out and shit. But I'm a firm believer that even if we do, man, there's gonna be something next. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> well, there'll be something after us, fuck. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the the the, the likability that we're gonna in our lifetime. I don't know. I was just watching the. Uh, I really like uh, the, the the Lex, 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 Lex. Lex fuck, what's his name? Lex Friedman or whatever. No, I forget his name. He's got a podcast with uh, that. He's an MIT engineer and shit, and he brings on all these MIT fucking professors and and graduates and shit. MIT's like the top dogs right. of like n- into the like cutting edge of the new technology and comp- right. and he brings all these on and he just brought this uh, the like the world's greatest economic uh, ec- economics physicist or whatever on, and I was listening to that and he's like. Uh, economic wise what they you know they, they they break everything down into inputs to calculate everything to what the end result right. is going to be of each part of our economy and they just put one thing in take one thing out and see how it's going to change deform you know right. and these guys um, if we don't kill ourselves he knows, he estimates like we got seven to eight hundred years best before we blow ourselves up, especially once, because nuclears, nukes are getting cheaper and cheaper to make, right. weapons of mass destruction anyway, and it's not right. just nukes, it's the fucking bio warfare, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, these viruses and everything that... Yeah, man, it's just a lot of wild shit out there uh, already, yeah. Yeah, like this whole thing, no one knows, it could have been a lab, lab leak, they haven't disproven that yet, even though they, like, some of the news try to say the... They beat around the bush and, and use some really funky wording trying to say it's debunked, but it hasn't been, and it's still a big possibility. Um, the, the one fucking famous doctor, Brett Weinstein, uh, or Eric Weinstein, one of the Weinstein brothers, uh, they're both fucking MIT doctors or whatever. 
uh, has said, like, no, it's a very big possibility that it was mm. leaked. And, like, wow. that's why they got in trouble for fucking with coronaviruses back in 2014 or whatever in Chapel Hill's virological lab. Like, they got, they were put it out in a magazine article, in a science article, talking about how they had figured out how to manipulate the, the virus to where it was more susceptible to the human genome or whatever. And, like, the science community kind of threw up a fuss and they shut down the funding and went to the Wuhan one or whatever. Right. And that's where the, the, the research continued on. And there's like paperwork and everything, the articles in the magazine and all that shit to prove that they were testing the fuck out of how to figure out how to make a, the, the shit more contagious. So if they, it's, it's just coincidental to me. And the, like the other thing is a year before like almost to a almost to the t a year before the fucking virus they did this big thing at john hopkins where it's like they they fucking ran a simulation like this whole simulation of what would happen like it had fake recordings of, of fake news articles and news uh segments and shit uh and people how the people were going to react all over a virus that's a, a coronavirus and this is a year before we knew anything about the coronavirus so it was like even if they didn't do it y'all planned a year you spent millions of dollars doing this whole simulation and running all these fucking theories right. out and testing it and what would happen and how would we need to be prepared right. you fucking failed <laughs> you practiced this a year ago <laughs> like right. you didn't have your shit together by now and it's like you it's just sketchy. They said instead in that one, I think it's like Agenda something, I forget. It's a John Hopkins channel. They have that shit out there. It's just like that World Economic Forum talking about the Great Reset. Like, you've been calling these people fucking kooks and conspiracy theorists for years for, for talking about a Great Reset and all that. And it's this new world, whatever they're talking about. And now they're talking about it in the news. And it's like, you've been talking shit on these crazy quacks. What's to believe now? Like the World Economic Forum came out with the, they took it down off their website, but it was a, a video, and it was like, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy about it, and it's talking about the World Economic Forum basically canceling everyone's debt, but also taking all profit, private property and having it in form of like a, a country, like one, not a country, but like one government throughout the whole world, and it's like, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, the Great Reset's one of those big conspiracy theories that they're not talking about too much. You keep catching a few good ones. I think Russell Brand, you know who he is? Yeah, the, He's the got, British guy. Yeah, yeah, the British guy. He talked yeah, about Russell Brand. Yeah. He had a video to where he went over a bunch of the shit that they were talking about in in it. And uh, I think he's the one that's put most attention towards it of what's going on. That's going to be a great reason. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't care. He's a mil It's funny listening to a millionaire, multimillionaire talk about like some shit that's not going to affect him. He's right. one of those elite celebrities that they're going to. Right. I don't know. That's why I'm building me a bunker. I'm going to live in the bunker. I, I wish it could be a blast from the past. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with the shutdown. Let this shut this bitch back down. Let's go back. Shut everything up. Um, you know what? I even figured out a way through the shit or paper. I don't even care. Y'all go buy it all. <laughs> oh, you figured out the three shells. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? This is the year for demolition, man. Isn't it? It's 2020 or 2021, I think. Oh, yeah. That's a great movie. Have you seen the uh, the shit that China's building uh, genetically enhanced soldiers? What? Yeah, yeah. This is a this is a real thing too, as well. No bullshit. They're genetically modifying soldiers. GMO in there. soldiers. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And what's the movie from back in the day with Jean Claude and Van Damme? Was it the oh, Universal, Universal Soldier? Soldier yeah. yeah, that's what they're doing right now. Oh shit! And to think if they're doing it now, we done did it. Yeah, probably. I did. Everybody probably already done did. They don't ever tell you about the shit till it's been out for a while, like till they've already tinkered the fuck with it. And so yeah. I always think about get lost thinking about uh, clones because I'm like they cloned a sheep from the beginning and it lived a <laughs> long life and died of old age. Yeah. 
They cloned. That was in the nineties, like yeah. the earlier nineties. Yeah, cloning's a little like much it, for me, man. I don't like to think down that rabbit. <laughs> it's like wait, they can do it. So, and now you hear of all these new startup companies uh, that Dude, are like growing was... meat, like growing the organs oh, and yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, which that that's kind of cool though, man. Like if we're gonna talk cloning on any <laughs> aspect, that's the cool one, man. Grow organs for people, grow meat for us to eat. Like, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I'd probably try it meat, definitely. Meat farms, three yeah. D meat printers so too. That's yeah. one thing that's been an idea. So, uh, oh damn, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. Hold on, where were we? Meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah we we were talking about the the, the they were printing meat and the clones and the clones. Yeah, clones. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. So I just seen this thing, right? This is like recent. There's this artist that was going around New York and picking up cigarette butts off the corners and getting like a, G- a DNA scan and like re replicating what their faces of these people would look like and put it like in an art museum. Just like, and it's like, that's the thing is like, your face could be on this wall if you smoke cigarettes. Like, crazy dude like that kind of shit that's too much 23 man. and what is it the genetic shit the tree of whatever 20 the you send in your dna to them to put on into a database oh and yeah, they, like, yeah tell yeah. you like, what your like ancestry.com yeah the ancestry I'm see saying. now uh i'm actually curious about that too man because i got friends that have sworn that they're like native you know what i'm saying and then they yeah. do ancestry and it comes back that they're yeah, not we've had politicians get hit with that one whole so, well, what's so, her name Elizabeth so Warren. like i know my my <laughs> dad has native in him i know this for a fact so I'm, i got an ancestry.com kit at my house right now bro <laughs> i just haven't been able to like not smoke eat or drink for half an hour to be able to take it yet <laughs> but my old lady got it for me for christmas and i'm gonna i'm gonna try it out soon and they come back telling me oh yeah you're not native american i'm gonna be like bullshit bro yeah. you fucking people over out here you lied to me i, I wanted a cool name bro i got a friend who who had like a whole native piece on their thigh bro uh, <laughs> no way just turn around find out dude. goddamn drop you're a goddamn <laughs> mexican <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. crazy, bro. It's What's crazy. the difference, really? Native Mexican, they are the they probably have a very close. They they, they, they yeah, look the alike same. a lot, yeah. bro. If, if if you've ever like seen a town full of a lot of native people, you would probably. Oh yeah, no, I've yeah. I'm over here talking shit. Like I know I got native. In me. <laughs> the first time I was in a town with a lot of native people, I thought they were Mexican. So <laughs> I, I was even telling my friend, I was like, "Look, they're like wipe the chicken off your face, mijo." And they were like, "Hey, I'm pretty sure these are." Uh, natives and i'm just like what wow, <laughs> i always got a full-blown mustache i don't buy it yeah it's you see the long luscious hair <laughs> yeah it's no a, bandanas right <laughs> no yeah, dickies yeah. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah now that you mention it <laughs> <laughs> no mowers all right I'll, so I'll yeah i was out. actually uh <laughs> just just uh uh seeing some recent studies too about like how like uh a lot of them came over from like the ice bridge, like where like a last. Oh yeah, 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 stuff. yeah, yeah. So yeah. like that's why you get a lot of native people who look Asian. Yeah. If, and if then, we do uh, aboriginals too, yeah, from uh, so that's Australia, all, they're, they're like supposedly. One so of that's the why oldest. you get a lot of darker Native Americans, yeah. and then there, you know that a lot of Native American people were black. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, no, yeah, the the we with no our melanin in in this, yeah, you yeah, know, we we ain't melanated. So, because we are uh, savages, barbarians. It's from what? This, uh, the, the shit Nick Cannon. Do you remember him catching a bunch of bullshit? He caught a bunch of flack because he, they believe that his, you know, I believe it. They call him anti, anti-Semitic because... Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah we always get a lot of flack. For yeah, that. yeah, because the white man supposedly come from the Caucasus Mountains. They were savages, dirty. They didn't. We didn't bathe. They taught us how to cook and clean and be civilized, pretty much. And then we came in and dominated and took over the world. So, and when they stood, they they claimed that the Jews, which I believe are like the 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 children of God or the, the marked people or whatever. It's actually black people and they, the white man stole that. And I, I don't know the whole ins and out of it. I've tried to get somebody on here that would, um, would, you know, break it down for me and give me the whole thing. But, uh, they're not big fans of white people in all honesty, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which they're I mean, they're cool. And they where I perform and they're there. They're like, they, I mean, it's, they don't hand me a uh, one of the one of the little cards with their next event on right. it, you know. They, which I get, I, you know. 
I get it. I grew up uh, with, you know, with my pop, you know, right. black stepdad. I know I'm the white devil. He told me many times. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm cool with it. Uh, I'm not. I, I, I've got no justice for uh, white people. <laughs> it's like, we, yeah. I, it's hard to fucking defend something that's that horrible when you look yeah. at the history. It's like, yeah, you guys are right. I yeah. can't argue there. <laughs> true, man. True. Yeah. It's, 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 how do you, it's a rough it? one to argue for sure. Yeah. And then they're like, well, how do you fix it? I don't know. Anything I say is wrong right now yeah, because yeah. don't not... take our ideas because yeah. we're obviously fucked up this chance. Right. Yeah. It's, it's crazy too, man. It is. I, I just, uh, that's why, uh, too, that you get a lot of, uh, redheaded people in Jamaica and stuff because yeah. they put a lot of Irish people there. Did you know that? Yeah, when well, Bob Marley's where, like, dad was white, actually. Yeah, and that's where you military. get a lot of the, uh, the, the accent, too, is apparently like, <laughs> of, like, broke off Irish. Mm. Well, Jamaica. Then the Irish went, the Ireland went through a lot of wars, didn't they? Like, a lot of civil wars as far as... I'm not too sure, man. Like I'm not, the IRA and, and all that. I watched Peaky Blinders a few times. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see you. <laughs> yeah, that's the only one gangster white dude movie. Like, it's like these Irish gangsters <laughs> and shit. Like, and by the end of it, at the end of the first episode, you're like, you know, Peaky fucking Blinders. <laughs> you're like doing the... The goddamn accent and e- shit. You know, Egan's Rats is named after uh, white Irish gangsters. Really? Yeah, yeah. So the name Egan Rat- Egan's Rats is derived from a 1900s St. Louis Irish street game named Egan's Rats. Oh, shit. So I got the name listening to uh, 88.1, and they're like, today in St. Louis histories, and they told a story about Egan's Rats and how they took all the barrels of whiskey out of the distillery because it was during Prohibition, so Jack Daniels moved their whiskey distillery up here to St. Louis and had it all locked in a warehouse. He gets rats, broke it all out, took it, and just distributed it all over the city, man. Yeah. Like, and I was like, that's some Robin Hood shit. <laughs> yeah. like, let's name our group Egan's Rats, because you know, me and Jeff were still thinking of a name at the time, and he was like about it. Because yeah. all the names we had brainstormed were shit, and <clears throat> yeah, we ran so... with that. And uh, Then come to find out later, they were actually a pretty violent street gang. We didn't. And they were like, oh, you guys... They were, like, apparently, like, linked with, like, the Valentine's Day massacre and shit, like, with Capone and everything. Yeah, we, oh, we didn't know. Uh, and they cool. got the name Egan's Rats, because, like, there's two dudes, Thomas Kenny, Thomas Snake Kenny, and then Thomas Egan. And then, like, there was a bunch of their peeps, the gang members, you know, locked up one night, and the, the jailer dudes come by, and they was like, man, you're all just a bunch of dirty rats. And then that's where Egan's Rats came Oh, from. shit. So like uh, yeah, well live it, own it, like make your right. put your artwork on your albums like super gnarly. Well, see, and that's why uh, our our album has the uh, rat on the barrel in the sea of brown water. The brown is like whiskey, uh, and that's why that, the rat okay. on the barrel is all because of that story. So that's actually something we've never talked about before. <laughs> that's yeah, you just uh, that's fucking dope as shit. It's kind of like uh, this band back here. They had to change. This is what their album cover was afterwards, and this album was released right around like nine twenty, nine something like shortly after this happened because Columbine shooting happened had happened in the or not so before that, and their uh, cover album cover was got a hand with a gun that was all bloody dripping off of it, so, and shoot the kids at school. It was the album cover, and their their fucking people were like, "No, right. <laughs> the uh, producers or whatever, whoever runs that." And they're like, "No, we can't. That no, right. pick something else." Yeah. And the drummer uh, had worked at that tower, and the guy that replaced him, I, be- I believe the story is, is that died in nine eleven, and he left early for a tour with that band, and so they put that shit in there, and I was like, "That's dope," because. Like, right. I went down that 9-11 conspiracy yeah. trail for way too long. <laughs> yeah, I'm, picky, I'm picky about my album covers, man. I mean, I've even, like I told you, I was working on my own solo stuff, right? right. I've got my album cover for that, actually, already. Yeah. Uh, the project's going to be called Snakes and Sparklers. It's a joint project with me and a producer. Okay. So the producer's Chris J. Bo. Uh, he used to stay out here in Illinois and sometimes in St. Louis. Now he's out in Arizona. But it's always going to be, you know, Dub Flow and Chris J. Bo present Snakes and Sparklers. You know? oh, that's what and that's mean. obviously a Joe Dirt reference for the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. you know no, <laughs> no whiskey, dude. No whiskey yeah. don'ts. 
<laughs> kick and wing, bro. Yeah, kick and wing. So, and then, you know, the album cover is is a snake coiling a sparkler. Uh-huh. And, and I, I got it all in, like, this, you know, design that I want. I, I go through this dude. Uh, you should get a firecracker and put it in a toad's butt. Like, that's what the other <laughs> one is, right? Yeah, you yeah, shove put, a butt. Throw it, throw and they up a bullfrog's ass. <laughs> and throw it on the back. Yeah. <laughs> Make some plush toys. Yeah, see, that's you win twice, man. See, <laughs> yeah, that was a great movie. I loved the Joe Dirt shit. Yeah. I don't know how well the second one did. I don't know. I don't want to go there, but the first one was great. I remember watching that as a kid a lot. Uh, David Spade. Whoa, what's up, dude? But yeah, fuck yeah. So you guys, uh, yeah, and it it really has not like. It, it, the album is not like reference for anything. Like it doesn't have like a lot of Joe Dirt references in it. No, it just you just like that shit. It, it, was, it was literally like uh, the like first song me and him did together. I called Snakes and Sparklers, mm-hmm. and then I just like the concept of it being like the good stuff that mm-hmm. I I ran with it. Named the whole project Snakes and Sparklers. This was a that's. And, it, and like I said, the album cover. I was wondering. Cool, how I wanted it to look kind of like a flag. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Kind of like an emblem for a flag. So. Yeah, I've always wondered. So it's a green, it's a green snake coiled around a black sparkler, but it has a red outline around the snake and the sparkler. Do you do all that shit on the computer, or you draw it? Uh, I got, I got a dude that I go through for all. He made our Egan's Rats uh, one, and he made this one. That's Illustrious Visions. Uh, Old Tech Supreme over at Illustrious Visions. So you know, if anybody out there listening that likes our artwork, that's that's who. I go yeah. through. No, that's just y'all he always kills good. it, man. He always gives me a really good price, and yeah. he'll always send me a lot of proofs beforehand, being like, "Hey, if there's anything you want to change, if you like how this what's that is, kind of run? What's that charge?" Uh, it really depends on what you want. So, yeah. um, just like a logo, maybe. like the first, like the first one, our first album cover. I think he did for like a hundred. Oh, so cool. the Egan's Rats one, so the one where he's the rats yeah. on that, and uh, the one that I got done. Uh, he did for fifty, but that's just because it was a lot easier. It was a lot simpler to make. Yeah, because yeah, so, I, I so like the, the more complex it is, and and he'll hand draw stuff too. Is why I love to go through the dude. Like if you if you ever look at our Egan's Rats album, like that rat that's on that barrel, like he is just like hand drawn. That's kind of like his style of how he does it. Yeah. And like I love that rat. Like <laughs> he's like that's my rat. Yeah, that dude, that's dope. Like <laughs> that, that should be our logo for real. We, yeah. I, I don't want to jip him like that. You know, I'd have to. Have, I feel like I had to ch- chalk him some more money. Like, hey, we just run him with this one piece of this <laughs> for our logo for right now because it's just that dope. Yeah. Did you ever have any like what was the what's been the the hardest thing in being like in the music? When when has anyone given you a great piece of advice that just like kept you from throwing it in the fucking the towel? Like, because I know you went with a lot of people and got to meet a lot of uh, older cats. Like a lot of the Common Jones dudes have been doing it a while. I don't know how they've been doing it about as I don't know how long they've been doing. It seems like they've been doing it a while. They got yeah. some polished up shit. I like I've had their album uh, for a while, and then I sold my truck, and now it's all gone. So <laughs> they yeah. left it in there. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if I could think of like a piece of advice that somebody's made. Cause, cause to be honest, man, when I've made music, a lot of the times, like I've, I've, I've never really, like I guess back when I, I first started, you know, cause I just used to do freestyle stuff in there all yeah. the time. So, like when I actually like started like making like music like on record for like people to listen to and stuff like that. I don't know, like I always kind of made music for me. You know what I'm saying? If people liked it, that's dope. And yeah. if not, it was always kind of just like another creative outlet. And then it just kind of like got ran with so you don't really write either do you everything's in your head isn't it uh yeah man over like the past i want to say maybe two to three years i've gotten to the point where i, I just don't pen and pen and pad yeah i think like you, at you all. talked like, about that on the because i had just got to the point where like i had wrote so much up to that because i've been doing it a long time mm-hmm. that i had realized most of the time that four bars on that piece of paper was all I ever really needed to remember something. You know what I'm saying? Once I remembered how that went mm-hmm. and carried on. And don't get me wrong. I've hit a couple snags in, in that process. You know, there's been a couple times where, like, a year ago I wrote something and some, that somebody wanted me a feature on or something like that. And then they, like, approached me, like, a year later, like, hey, you still got that? And I'm just like, uh, 
uh, I got half of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> got lost the other half, but I could just rewrite something else. <laughs> yeah, I have a. I'm, I'm very similar when it comes to jokes and comedy. When I think of an idea, I just jot down two or three words that I need to remember right. the subject or the premise or whatever. Right, and it just kind of sends yeah. it. It's weird, man. It's almost like learning a foreign language. Like you yeah. like categorize these boxes of it. So once you just got that first little line off, it just. Psh- yeah. Your brain knows how to pattern its way back to the rest. It's it's really a fascinating thing, man. And honestly, like I, I grew up uh, not saying want to say like I had a great memory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like over the time of writing in my head and stuff like that, like my memory game is like on point these days. Like, and what's the biggest like how that what's did you have anything that you do that helped you with that? Like to how you for because it is amazing. I don't know how you guys think of some, especially back in the day when Antonio would do it, like just off the top of the dome at the bus stop. And right. we were like 13, 14 years old. It was like, holy shit. You know, like how do you think of that? <laughs> like just off the top of his head. Like, yeah, hey, like you guys, that. what you do, that's definitely a skill. It yeah, is. freestyle and writing processes for me are like two different. For sure. Have you ever tried to dictaphone before? Just like when you're freestyling and record that shit with your... Nah, man. Because like for some reason... we well, All right. So I did back when I was like in high school. And like me and my homies, like when I lived in this little trailer park and shit. And I had little trailer park homies. And like every day after school, we just like get high and fucking rap. And we'd set like somebody's cell phone down. And just like I had like one beat CD. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like seven beats on it that somebody had just gave me one day. Yeah. And then we just let that ride, and we just made, like, a cell phone album. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, the homies would beatbox or something yeah, like that, yeah. and we would record. But I don't know, man. Like, I, the older I got, I guess it, it was more of getting out of that environment of just everybody there to do that. Yeah. And just trying to do it on my own. It was weird, man. I was like, as soon as I whipped out that camera on myself, I'd get, like, cock shy or something, and I just couldn't spit as hard <laughs> as I would if I, like, didn't. And even, like, to this day, like, if I'm freestyling in a crowd and I, like, cut the corner on, like, somebody in the crowd and they got that phone on me, dude, it's just, like, some weird subconscious uh, reflex. It's like yeah. my brain's now, like, think twice yeah. about what you <laughs> say, motherfucker, because <laughs> they're recording you. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be famous for the wrong reason. <laughs> right, right. It's weird. It's weird. So Just cancel you before you get started. And, and, and like, the, the freestyle process for me is, like, always, like, trying to think two steps ahead. So, like, if I'm, like, saying this bar scheme to you right now, say what I was saying right now was rhyming, I would be thinking about what I'm about to say after that yeah. while I'm saying this to you right now, just so I got that rhyme scheme piece yeah. together but that's also developing as an artist you know what i'm saying like i felt like for a long time i freestyled better when i was younger but that's also because i freestyled simpler you know what i'm saying like yeah. i had one rhyme bar schemes of course it was easier to think of one word rhymes when i'm yeah. freestyling like oh yeah the, the uh the, that's one thing i'm uh when i listen to something like my nephews were over here they're like 13 and 12 and they're like talking about these rappers or whatever they so-called call rappers and they're more of those like frat boy kind of, you know, they just. Tom McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in a way. But I mean, even Tom McDonald's is a little bit more in depth than these guys. I, I, I don't. I want to just come out on him and say I don't listen to Tom McDonald's. Yeah. I just know that he used to be a frat boy. It's a reason. Really? So, yeah. That, like, the, what was he? Well, see, I know one guy they were talking about. I think he's like a. He was like this college fa- baseball star and got an injury. And then now he's like this fucking rapper and it's right. just like that party the 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 hook that, that they say oh but the hook's nice you know and it's like what well, that's not what i'm listening for it was like me, it was a waste of a hook right. it was a me, waste me of a, a beat were, <laughs> yeah, me and a buddy were talking about the other day about how like kids these days just want the hooks they don't want the 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 yeah. anymore can they like, sh- do they shake their ass to a one minute tiktok right. video and make right. it like cool which i mean Kind of makes me a little worried because there's there's some songs I'm about to drop that don't even have a hook on it at all. Like I, that was even like one of my old coworkers I was talking about the other day, and he was talking about how he couldn't imagine a song that didn't have a hook. And I was like, bro, I got some written right now. I can let you hear. Like this song yeah. doesn't have a hook. This is just literally two three minutes of me just. Oh, see, bars. I like that. Like they, they got Big L freestyle '98 or whatever. Right. I let the nephews listen to that. I was like, that's was hip hop back then. Right. I was he was throwing shots at everybody, talking right. shit at everybody. Probably why you know he died of AIDS. I think. Right. I don't know. And I, I, mean, I got that right now. I got that two three minutes of just bars <laughs> in my head right now. No hook. That. Yeah. See, that's that's incredible because I even have to write down. Uh, being a one liner, like doing a lot of one liners, I've gotten one like a ten minute set down that I don't really need a notepad. But open mics, 
I've already done a lot because I'm trying to get through like 20 of them, especially if the crowd's not a great crowd. There's only a handful of people and they're not really right. laughing, laughing. I'll just run through some jokes and hopefully there's enough comedians there that are at that open mic right. that I'll get a feel from them. Because one, as a one-liner, it's pretty easy to get a fucking feel for a joke. Right. I think that's the best way to get a feel for a joke is just uh, try it monotone. Try your, your your joke, the shortest form of it, like just the premise and the punchline. And if you get some laughs at an open mic on that, then build the fucking, right. then build it up and everything. Right. I see a lot of guys waste a lot of time on a joke that's just not funny, and they're right. just hammering away at it. And yeah, sometimes some people can make it really good, but sometimes you just need to move on to the next one real quick and come back right. to that shit later. I think that's why they call it back to the basics, bro. Yeah, dude, that's what I always try to do, where I, I'm always... Uh, do that like it's a I, I fall into all different kinds of shit i do some storytelling sometimes but uh i try to keep it basic just like right. i really like like the henny youngmans and the uh stephen wrights like yeah, those dudes are, like they didn't a lot of people right. say you gotta have truth in your comedy for it to be funny bullshit right. mitch hedberg i got a i got an ant farm and them motherfuckers haven't grown shit like right. <laughs> it's like that's funny, you know, yeah. you know. And if you rip their arms off, they look like little snowmen. <laughs> it's like it, you don't need it. Has right. nothing, no truth to it. Right. And uh, yeah, he's got a lot like that too. It's yeah. Just right to the punch. So like, yeah. And that's I really liked. All the, I tried off storytelling when I started, but that's kind of like because you rap like that. You do a, a storytelling. I love it when you guys do, used to do right. that. Like because I was a big fan of Slick right. Rick. Like Slick Rick, <laughs> you know. I used and to see, love and that. that's when we started. So I'm not known for a lot of that, man. Yeah. I'm not, and and on this, I don't want to say there's a lot of it, but the ones that I, I I've got two that don't have a hook on this project right now that I'm sitting on that are, are finished. Well, I guess one, I, I still got some work I got to do on it. But one of them, it's been, the one of them's the single, actually, to the whole project. Yeah. It doesn't have a hook, retrospect. How uh, soon is that going to be? Man, I really don't want to say, because yeah. last time I did say something, I, I said it would be like in the next month, and that was last month. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to say end of this month, but yeah. probably more along the lines of end of next month. Yeah, everybody's got the, uh, the the COVID just slows has slowed a lot of shit. Down. See, my, my birthday's in May, so oh, he's like, I'm like fucked up. Yeah, like like last year, I got kind of like pressed Egan's rest for us to release our shit in May. So uh, this year, I'm probably gonna go to release my start releasing my shit in May. So that's and that's your solo or Egan's? yeah, that's my solo stuff. Yeah. I I, I want to aim to release that first single, which is the solo single of the album. Uh, like I said, without a hook and uh. Around the May, in the May. Yeah. And where do you le release it on first? Spotify or uh, where, uh, where can I usually put it like on DistroKid so people can go hit like a bunch of pre save links for like Spotify, iTunes. Oh, okay. And then like whenever it drops, it'll drop to all of those at once Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, pretty much yeah. anything that people listen to music on. And uh, That's dope. But I, the pre saves these days help out a lot because like if you get more pre saves for your single, then like Spotify playlists pick you up and stuff, and if they pick you up, you know you get thrown on a good playlist, and you get all these other ears you never would have got, you know. Oh, yeah, and yeah. it's cool in this day and age because like I literally had to do nothing but throw my shit on yeah. DistroKid, and I have like if, they getting... if enough of my peeps come and help me out and pre-save. Uh, is there enough? Pre... I got a chance to branch out and those playlists. Are these dudes making anything? Is that like a job? Dude, or... I I don't really know, but it seems like it. Because there's a couple of people that I know, like, just through, like, social media that it seems like that's all they do. They curate playlists and shit and work with different artists, which they obviously are charging them money. And I guess some people are smart enough to put this money back into curating playlists and, like, they're making moves off of it. Like, Yeah, I wish I could just figure out the next trick. Like, yeah, you're, next... yeah, you're basically, I guess, like, record deal hustling, like. Yeah. Like, without record deal, you know, the, without the record deal, like, but you're like networking people to the different distribution and being the middleman, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, and but but still skimming some money yeah. off, but still giving the artist a chance to make money because I don't want to say it for everybody. I don't really know the science behind it. Like I said, there's only a couple of people I've seen on social media that seem like that's what they're doing, but but that's at the same time, the artists don't they... make a lot of money off of streaming no. at all. Like, no. so you got to have millions upon millions yeah. of streams. Oh, that's the same thing with like YouTube. Even for you to that... cut a halfway decent check that ain't fucking paying your bills. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, I've had they don't people. pay a bill to two bills. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked to people with their with their YouTube channels, and they're like, "I just got to get to it." monetize once i can get that I'll, I'll be making money it's like no you won't you yeah. still got a, a thousand subscribers Dude. and 400 watch hours is not that right. really hard to do from the grand scheme of things yeah. like you I don't know. make much from that you got to be selling and get advertised and be yeah, i had an old roommate trying to do that with like a D D stuff on youtube and he's like i just need 500 subscribers i can start monetizing i'll start making money and i'm just, and he was like sometimes will try to like ask me like hey how do you got like so many followers on different kinds of social <laughs> medias and stuff and it's like bro i've been at this for 2008 yeah for, for <laughs> fucking a decade <laughs> So, uh, yeah. I had a Facebook when I was younger that had a shit ton of friends and followers or whatever, and I deleted it. Not even back then, you could do more people weren't monetizing, everyone right. had a bunch of friends, yeah. and then all of a sudden, I don't know when, but someone figured out that like you could be an influencer <laughs> and have all these followers. Yeah, it came like, out of shit. nowhere. Yeah, but it, a but lot I, of that with like Twitch and stuff too. Yeah. Like people uh, that came along with like the streaming, like people playing video games. And, like now people Dude, like to watch people crazy. play video My games. My nephews and they get paid a lot of money for it. Yeah, they were doing that. I was like, yo, <laughs> dude, this motherfucker's making millions doing this. Yeah, like. I tried to talk my boss one time into like we should make a YouTube video building houses like we build them from the ground up. Let's fucking we just quick short people, explanations. Yeah. I was like, people would watch the shit out of it, bro. Because yeah. honestly, the, oh they do. I've looked the, up videos. This is the turn of the century that where people are starting to realize like you have infinite information in your pocket yeah. at all times. I can't tell you how many times I get on YouTube to be like, let me see how you do something. Oh, dude, cool. the DIY. There's nothing you can't learn or do. They have physics and shit like shit, that. I would watch you guys build a house just so I had that. Info. I don't plan on building a house anytime soon, but just so I had information for it, just in case. Yeah. My boy's like, hey, I'm working on building a house. Like, hey, well, actually, I watched a YouTube video. Let me give some input on some shit that I learned. Yeah, those need to be 16 inches apart. 16 right. yeah, inches yeah. done. Yeah. No, I, uh, we, uh, this, I've, I've been consistent with it now, and I'm going to try to keep being consistent with it, even if I'm not, I'm not worried about monetization. More or less, it helps with stud- with, the, with with speaking and getting to hang out with people you don't get to hang out with, it, like at the clubs. Right. Like, that's a big issue. Like, these guys at the club, um, you know, they're all in their head, working on it, thinking about their set and everything. So as, just like me, they're not getting into two in-depth conversations but some of these guys are kind of fun to hang out with definitely there's been a couple of the guys that i've had uh come on and it's like (laughs) i didn't realize you were this cool (laughs) and then some of them that you think are pretty cool they're just like dull as fuck it's like ah damn it's hard to keep a conversation going yeah yeah. i can see that man especially in the podcast business oh yeah there's some that are just dreadful and uh you can tell like when there's just no yeah, like, right. it, uh, I've had a, one dude brought his old lady, and his old lady and I have had exchanged words on Facebook, of course, because oh. I was an asshole too. She was a bitch. I was an asshole. It's all good though now, because we. So that was a tense podcast, huh? No, we worked. We we worked it out with words, man. You know, right. I was like, we should get along, because I'm an asshole truly, and I can tell you're a bitch. So right. we should be friends. Odd, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And the, I was just told that I, uh, like, she has her beliefs. Uh, she said I was appropriate, and she feels I appropriate uh, culture with my hair. I was like, okay, that's cool. You can have your, it's America, baby. Woo. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. You can think that. It's like, yeah, that's the that's thing, man. Everybody's got opinions for sure. Yeah. She's definitely, uh, she's definitely She's she's actually pretty cool. She's like a stoner chick and everything. Like after getting to know her, but um, she does comedy and I, you know, she's she works hard at it. So I ain't got nothing, no nothing bad besides uh, she hurt my feelings and you know she hasn't really said she was sorry. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. There mm-hmm. now it comes out. <laughs> I thought she said you weren't sorry about it. I'm not. <laughs> no, no, she's uh, she's actually pretty cool. Uh, we've. Done, I think we've done a couple of shows together now. I don't know. She does a lot of shows. I don't know how these people put on all these shows. Like, I've, I've called and talked to tons of people, and they're like, yeah, not with COVID, buddy. <laughs> I was like, how the fuck are these people landing these spots? Like, I haven't found a good spot because to do a show. Maybe that's why, because I'm picky. You know, I'm like, I want it to be a stage and a nice actually to where I can basically turn it into a comedy club for right. the night. I think that's how I kind of had it set up with Bobby's place, but 
Right. Shit got shut down. Which y'all, that's a place y'all could perform. That's a nice stage, big enough for a band, and quite a few people always show up there. Right. And they have a lot of bands play there on Saturday nights, I believe. Ladies' night or whatever. Yeah, they play, uh, they they pay the bands too. Yeah, y'all should get in touch with them. Actually, that's they're a nice little spot, little little hole in the wall kind of spot. Valley Park, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know. I'm pretty sure I know what tech. What are you talking about? Uh -huh. So, what do you got? Where can people find you at on your uh, on your social media? How many? What do you have? Oh, uh, I got Facebook and Instagram right now. Facebook uh, and Instagram. Yeah, I got a YouTube page, but there's nothing on there. You can come follow me and subscribe. <laughs> to me, but I, I don't have any videos posted yet. What's yeah. the uh, the the Instagram handle or whatever it's called? Uh, uh, dub flow or dub yeah, underscore? Yeah. It's a uh, dub dot flow dot two. Dub dot flow dot two. Yeah. Right on, right on. Cool. That's cool. my Instagram. And then Facebook's just dub flow. Yeah. Cause yeah. I got I got a, a artist page and I got a personal page that I I'm pretty nitpicky with, so I don't have five thousand friends yet on it. Yeah, I don't. I, I guess I'm not too nitpicky with it because I get a lot of fucking weirdos in my inbox. Right. Bro. <laughs> I get like I got like a. a I got a dude in my inbox right now telling me that his TV talks to him, gives him information, and he starts sending me pictures of his TV, which looks like it's unplugged in like a con like a construction building house or something, and then tells me that the TV gives some good information about me that I was born in the right time. And that he wants to meet up in the Columbia okay, wait, wait, con wait, conservation area. <laughs> yeah, bro. This, Dude, is, this, somebody is, awesome. this like, is somebody legitly in my DMs right now. Bro. And I'm just like, bro, I'm not me. Go up. along with it. Go along with uh, it. Be like, all right, where is the yeah, package yeah. going? Right. Like, send me the fucking ticket. Now, going to by Columbia? the way it sounds like to me is like this dude's TV is telling him to kill me at Columbia conservation area and drink my fucking blood. And we probably need to start checking this dude's uh, crawl space. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we need to go start checking around in the Columbia conservation area in the river around that spot. <laughs> yeah, well, damn. Because this dude's fucking... Like, the throat, the, like... You didn't like sleep with his old lady or something. Nah, nah, man, nah. Just some <laughs> random Facebook weirdo. And like, at first, I, I accept. You're famous, friend. man. Yeah. <laughs> so I accept a lot of people's friend requests. I don't know why they add me. Like, if we have like a certain amount of mutual friends, even if you got a weird ass profile pic, I'll usually accept you. That's a, uh, yeah. I, I'll usually go scan your page a bit, make sure you ain't posting some yeah. fucked up shit first. Yeah. I get a lot of these models that hit me up all the time. I guess I'm just, you know, a catch. Right. <laughs> no. I see that all the time. I'm like, we ain't got a mutual friend. How? Why? Why are you friend requesting me? So a lot of it does seem scammy, but this dude just seems fucking crazy, right? So like, as soon as he started sending me this crazy shit, I unfriended him. But I didn't block him. I want to see where this conversation <laughs> That's goes. What we may have a movie here. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Man. If I got service in your basement right now, I'd, I could, I could actually, I could show you the conversation. But I can't, I can't respond to the dude right now. We can't like bring him up. My phone's literally about to die. I got one percent. But oh shit. <laughs> You get you can scan a little bit of this conversation and just see that this is just like odd as fuck. Hey, do you have a cousin that doesn't take meds that takes meds on? <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know. He's something. He's he's off the rocker or some shit. Uh, but it, you're like a chosen one, huh? Yeah, it's like some shit that he was. Oh, I'll like, uh, just die. Uh, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> it literally. <laughs> man, that's creepy, though, right? Yeah, a little bit. He's like, they're talking about me. <laughs> Cut <laughs> it. Dude, I knew a chick that had this dude, her boyfriend, like, with well, this dude she was messing around with, I guess, only needed her IP address or something, or her password to her Wi-Fi, and went in there and changed all kinds of shit. It was, like, opening and closing her fucking garage door, like, because her house yeah. was a smart house or whatever. Yeah, had yeah. And, that's, and that's he that's took the over the whole system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he, he had enough talk. information to be able to control, like, right. she couldn't stop anytime she right. called up the company had shit changed over see that's the creepy shit too man it's like you get somebody's ip address that's you pretty much know where they live bro mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yeah there's a weird there's some weird ass shit with people watch random just watch hack into the security cams and shit and just watch people in their house like just sitting there in their house picking their ass but you know eating boogers and shit Thinking you're all alone, your security camera, you're right. checking the screen. Yeah, they're trying to find people masturbating. And, yeah, <laughs> it's a weird, it's a fetish. It's an actual. There's like an actual term or something. That's terrifying. Yeah. And then these motherfuckers going and getting jobs for the government and shit. Cause they're like, oh, you want to watch security cams all day? We got you, fam. Yeah, like, yeah, we got a job for you, hey, man. Here, here's a fucking access <laughs> to everybody's smartphone in their pocket right now. 
Listen in and watch. No, nah, that's a conspiracy. No, nah, Edward Snowden is in Russia right now for that shit that, right. that showed us. All they did was change some words in the the the, the laws or whatever, and they're right at it. So, yeah, the smart TV. If you have a smart TV or a smartphone, I feel like they. I don't think they're listening to everybody, but if they want to get your shit, their dat, your data, who you were with, where you were at, you know, uh, I don't know if they have a way to record the every conversation or like these conversations. Probably, right? I mean, shit, my, my I've got a smart TV that I can uh, Alexa or do this if I push the button. I don't have that shit just, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Me neither. Man. I got a special remote. You call me quite crazy, but I got one of the remotes without the fucking right. mic on it. The one with the mics upstairs. I live, I live in Southside St. Louis, bro. My house is like 100 something years old. We ain't got no fucking smart house, bro. <laughs> I got trouble keeping the doors closed and that motherfucker, let alone making it smart. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to update this one if, if we decide to sell it. It's been going up pretty decently. Well, I think we're in a housing market bubble. We're going to have another crash here soon. Yeah, but this is a great ass house, though. Yeah, but I mean, we are up like 40 or 50 grand since we bought it as far as what it could sell on there. And I haven't, we still haven't updated the, because this is a finished basement and it's considered living space now. So that's an extra 1,100 square foot that you can add on. And that's like, it adds value. I also have an electrical uh, ran to the detached garage now on its own circuit and panel and everything. So. Uh, that adds value, and I did uh, insulated the whole thing out there. That's a big, big monster. So if I do the smart home when we want to sell it, it should uh, adapt it should, quite nicely. <laughs> yeah, as long as if we can sell it before the bubble pops. I mean, there's all kinds of people that have been calling it for a long time, but it's got to. Like right now, the way the people are buying up out banks, like a lot of commercial insurance is and in, and in, in investments and. Right. Or buying just up random houses, cash, yeah. pretty much, and not on a, a credit line. So that's kind of what happened last time, in a way. We'll see. If it don't crash and we get up there, like, I'll sell this bitch if I can make a hundred grand profit real quick. Right? Hell yeah! Uh, you know, oh yeah! They're Perfect. selling these houses right down the road for three hundred grand, which is a hundred and like thirty more than what we paid for this, and they only come with like a quarter to an eighth acre of a lot basements unfinished fucking right. not considered living space like if they're getting 300 grand for those down right down the road from me and i've got five private you know acres and the it. castle tower yeah yeah in the castle tower with the gate you know yeah, a lot of people don't gate. know this that brad's got a big ass gate and driveway that makes him look like richie rich and a castle tower at his <laughs> yeah, house we had you to... could go up in it, and it has a hammock in it yeah, oh, of yeah. all things i got we got a tv up there now too <laughs> oh yeah the moving, kids came in i'm uh, moving in uh, i'm just gonna live in the castle tower shit. I, I, <laughs> i'm gonna troll it up we were making some money off that Airbnb shit. Like, <laughs> you'd bet. be surprised out here. People were like, I bet. They're like, we don't mind driving an extra few minutes to have a, you know, a house. And because we would have let pets too, we'd charge like a gnarly pet fee. Right. <laughs> like, and yeah. Well, see, yeah, but I mean, dude, that's like people like me, man. If I travel, man, I got pets, bro. I'll bring the yeah. pets usually. Yeah. Like, other than like touring pets. and stuff like that. Nah, see, yeah. <laughs> yeah now, I would not have the homies come and check in the house for that. And that's an extra fee right there. You're like, hey, bro, you. Hundred dollars from take care of my guinea pigs for a week. Or two. <laughs> yeah, but the dogs and shit, we want to bring the dogs. You know what I'm saying? We go camping. We want to bring the dogs. We go yeah, stay somewhere else. We, we want to bring the dogs. You know? Yeah, the dogs are like they're they're, they're part of the crew yeah, now. Yeah. Like, especially my 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 oldest dog, my buddy. He's like he's fucking he's getting old. So I, I don't want to. He has seizures and that shit too. So I, I, any moment he could go, and I'm not gonna take that very well and i don't want to be away <laughs> so i'd rather him be with me but you know how it is i know it's getting like you probably got to get home to them guinea pigs yeah yeah i gotta go checking on them get some <laughs> and let the dogs out oh yeah well i appreciate I got some you more house with. cleaning to do and then you know i would see yeah. some more creating to do. yeah i hear you keep at it oh man i'm glad you had me out like i said yeah. we've been talking about having it for a minute there's yeah. a winter time that yeah that badass snow that came Ooh, around dude i was yeah. gonna come out but you was like hey my driveway i was like yeah i know that driveway <laughs> i ain't yeah good we got these cool ass things that slip on our boots now that got like metal <laughs> spikes on them her mom's house. <laughs> they were like, you fucking Eskimo. They're, <laughs> just, <laughs> they, they're awesome. Some vertigo shit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's yeah, up. it's cool, man. Just come ice climb to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get you and Jeff on here. It was always Jeff. Jeff's hilarious. Like yeah, Jeff. maybe, man. We'll, yeah. we'll just stick with me for now. You know, and then yeah, we, we'll I, go, I'll come on again and then we'll see if it's warmed up <laughs> enough. For Jeff, 
Jeff, I don't know. He, he may still want to beat me up for that heartbreaker story. Uh, let's not bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that should be the first thing as soon as he walks in the door. That's a good icebreaker for him. Yeah, I'll be like, humi- you're decent. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's what I always say. His, his, cla- his closeted humiliation is a good starting point. <laughs> I've seen some pictures of him. Dude's getting healthy as fuck. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's he's, he's going to be a monster. Be, yeah, he'd be drinking those uh, healthy shakes all the time and, and working out and stuff. Oh, yeah, I got tired of that shit. Man, the morning I, I, and with the two smoothies, like, why I you think, need two? I think he just, uh, he moved out to St. Peter's with his old lady. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. He used to be right down in Arno. He used to hop, skip, and jump down into his home studio. And now I'm like, an hour and St. Peter's, bro. I think it's like, yeah, like a half hour, 40 minutes. I think it's 40 minutes. And uh, it takes me 40 minutes to get to his house, and it takes me 40 minutes to get to Tracy's house. Oh, shit. I moved to the city. I'm closer to everything else but the people I've been making music with for the past. (laughs) Set you, get you a place to set you up a nice studio. That's what I, I would like to do. I've got that garage out there too. I've thought about. I doing. need I need to start sweet talking Larry because he's now my closest friend with the yeah. studio. And last time I went, me and him just uh, worked on a track of his, and man, he be killing this. So it, I sounded really good over at his. Studio. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to start sweet talking him and let me come over and do work yeah. on some stuff. Maybe I slide him, slide him a twenty or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what's up, man. All right, I appreciate. All right. It. Yeah, no problem, bro. Thanks for having me.